Detroit Lions. What is going on, everybody? It is Thursday, so this is a special edition of Touchdown Detroit Lions, I guess, if you want to call it that. <laughs> but welcome in. How's everybody doing? Say what's up once you're in here. I already see a few comments going off. Rick, good to see you in here. John Peterson, go Lions. Yes, welcome back. The GOAT, Nate Sudfeld. Thank God we signed Nate. Don't know what I would have done without Nate, but uh, <laughs> what's going on? We got Shadow Viper 619 in here. Good to see you in here. Yeah, it's Thursday. I'm not normally going live on a Thursday, but I'm here. Uh, normally, my show is on Tuesday, but, you know, been a very busy week. Decided to bump it back to Thursday. A few more things happened anyways, so that's... uh. So it worked out, you know. Uh, but Kyle Webb, what's up? Shadow Viper says, hey, I'll take it. That's right. That's right. Nate Sudfeld back with the team to provide some knowledge and some, you know, comfort to Goff. Those guys are good friends. So having him over there on the sideline with Goff to, you know, be someone that he can chirp with is a good thing. But, yeah, let's uh, let's let some other people get in here real quick. Rick says Jared Goff will make a great emergency quarterback behind Sudfeld and Hooker. Yes. All right. You're a jokester, Rick. I'm just kidding. But, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Sudfeld signing. Kind of saw this one coming. Kind of saw this one coming. Jeremy Reisman was talking about it all off season that it was going to happen. But all right, let's get those questions rolling and I'll get to them. I promised that I can get back to these. But Shadow Viper, before I get going, says I missed everyone else's live earlier because my phone died at work. All right, well, welcome to Touchdown Detroit Lions. So we can get in here. If you got some questions, I will try to address them. I remember you, though, Shadow Viper. But let's do this. All right, the Lions are looking to have some joint practices with the Giants this year. Again, it seems like Dabble and DC are good friends. I like it. You know, some good competition there at the edge and with our tackles. Um, so, yeah, this is good. I always like the joint practices between the teams. I think that, you know, the way that Dabble coaches, he kind of brings intensity to. The Giants didn't have the best of team last year, but we all saw their troubles. But I think that this will be good. The Lions, once again, going up against the Giants. They said that they're going to go to New York. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Some news around the NFL. The Lions proposed a new rule, and it got passed. But basically, what the rule is, is if you win one of your first two challenges, is that you get a third challenge for a reward. I don't know why... You know, we wanted this because it seems like we never win any challenges, at least with D.C. It hasn't been very good so far. He's had some bad luck. You know, if they got some people up there watching who who are in charge of looking at the replays and calling into Dan and being like, hey, you should challenge this or don't challenge this. They need to get a new crew up there or maybe they don't have anybody, anybody up there. If they don't have any eyes in the sky. Get someone up there. Get a few people up there right now or some new ones if there's already people there because it has not been good so far. But we did propose this rule. It did get passed. So if you successfully get one of your, challenge, or if one of your challenges, one of your first two challenges are successful, then you get a third challenge. So, you know, I, I like that at least a rule we proposed got passed. But our another rule change that happened is that there's going to be a new kickoff moving forward in the NFL and it's going to look a little something like this. They're going to line up 
right in front of each other here. Kind of like, you know, across from like how they do in the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a little bit safer. Guys aren't going to be just flying down there, sprinting while other guys are running backwards and then have to turn around and block real quick. But, um, yeah, I actually have a video of it right here. This is it's from the XFL, but this is the model. It might be a little blurry, but this is what it looks like. And, yeah, it's a little bit safer. Guys can still, you know, hit the home run, get a return all the way for a touchdown. But, yeah, a lot safer there than what it was before. I personally, I don't know, you know. It, it does. There was a lot of stupid injuries last year. James Houston got hurt on the kickoff. So, if it's going to save some injuries, I'm all about this rule. Um, there is another rule. That just got passed that I don't know if I'm such a fan of, but um, the hip drop tackle is now illegal and draws a penalty. I believe it's a 15 yard penalty automatic first down. But, um, you know, the players association, they all came in agreement that they said that they were fine with it and they were OK to play with the hip drop tackle as they thought it might get confusing on how to tackle going forward. A lot of players reacted on social media. You know, Slay said there's going to be a lot of missed tackles now. Um, I think, you know, hopefully guys just start form tackling more, you know, going through the player. But it is hard to avoid that. And this is what is now going to be banned as well. And I'm, I apologize if this is blurry. You know, I took this from my phone and I sent it <laughs> to my computer. So, but this is what is now an illegal tackle. There's Hutch. He's going to grab Prescott and use all of his weight to drop him down. But this is, this is what they are now saying is going to be an illegal tackle. But right there, boom, that's a hip drop tackle. I don't know. There's other ones that are way more harsh than that. I don't know if that one would actually get called, but I mean, that is technically a hip drop tackle. You saw how he had his arms around his waist and then he dropped with all of his weight, but um, when he was behind him, but it does apparently cause 25% of the injuries or close to it was a stat that I read. And so, uh, you know, that's another thing. If you're going to prevent injuries, I guess that's okay, but. You know, it's getting ridiculous. You can't hit in the head, which, you know, that's another thing. But you can't hit high. You can't lead with the helmet. You can't drop your hips to tackle. There's only a few ways to go now. Um, they hate the defense. They hate defense, I guess. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out going forward. I did also see that a hip drop tackle also occurs maybe 1% throughout the game, like every time throughout percentage of the tackles throughout the game. So it is a rare time or a rare tackle that happens in the game. So I don't know, maybe it won't be that big of a deal, but players didn't like it. They are making the game a little bit weaker year by year. But yeah, I'm going to go over here in the comments. Lady Lion, what's up? Good to see you back in here. Shadow Viper says, do you think we grab a D end in free agency after draft? Also, if Mike Dana is still available, I'd like to have him thoughts, you know? Um, yeah, it depends on what we do in the draft and I, I could see us addressing maybe another D and maybe not though, because I think that they have a lot of trust in Marcus Davenport. We still have uh, James Houston over there. I think that Brad Holmes really believes in what, DJ reader is going to do for this defense and how much he's going to affect the rest of the line. He had a lot of high praise for him and his presser here lately saying that he's going to open up things for a lot of people. He's going to draw double teams. And he said he was particular, particularly, you know, looking forward to what he's going to provide for the pass rush. He says that he thinks he's going to get in the quarterback's face a lot, even though, he hasn't had a lot of sacks over the last few years, but he did say that he thinks this is going to allow Hutch and the other 
edges or defensive ends and Ali McNeil get loose and get to the quarterback, he thinks that he's really going to be a big help there on the defensive side. So I think they already trust in what they have. Maybe we address it in the draft early. I would like, you know, to see us go with an edge, a corner, um, with the recent news of Reynolds, which we'll get into here in a second. Uh, wide receiver is definitely there at, or an interior offensive lineman. But, you know, um, I don't think we are done in free agency. There are still a few guys we could go out and get. I don't know if they want to pay anybody big time. But, you know, after the draft, guys start to realize they're not going to get what they wanted originally, you know, from a team. So maybe they'll take a lesser of a deal, maybe a one-year prove-it deal. And, you know, Brad Holmes does love to do the one-year prove-it deals. I could see us bringing in a vet on that kind of deal. Maybe even wait till the trade deadline this time. And make a move this time. But like I said, I do think that they trust Davenport as long as he stays healthy to be effective this year. And um, James Houston as well. But, you know, DJ Reader is expected to be a force to reckon with and open up a lot of things. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. But good point and good question there, Shadow Viper. Rick says, going to have to start just laying dudes out, shaking my head. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just going to have to boom. You know, I it's going to get crazy. Uh, and, but they're probably going to, you know, call penalties on that, too, because, um, you know, it's it's getting soft. Hopefully this doesn't become flag football. You know, I, I, I'm getting scared. I'm getting scared. I don't want to see it be the Pro Bowl. But, yeah. We got to get the Super Bowl before it becomes that. All right. We got to get the Super Bowl before it comes that. John Peterson says, yeah, let's just play two and touch it. That's basically, basically what it's coming down to. It's, it's ridiculous. And the thing that bugs me the most is that the players association said they were fine with it. They said they were willing to go out there and risk it because it's part of the game. You know, they before, you know, with headshots, they were kind of more towards penalties for that, which is understandable. But, you know, these rules where you just touch the quarterback now on the head, you barely touch him and it's a flag. And now this hip drop rule, uh, it's it's getting ridiculous. It is getting out of hand. Rick says flags are dangerous. Nick might take an eye out. That's see. And it's happened. It's happened. I don't know if you guys remember that. I think it was, I forget the exact player's name, but it, he was playing for the Cleveland Browns. It was nasty. Ended his career. Terrible. Terrible. But, you, but you're exactly right. <laughs> All righty. All righty. Let's get into a few more Lions news things and, and keep these questions rolling. I will answer them. But uh, yeah, the Lions, this is some minor news. And this might be a shorter episode today. I've had a very busy week. I haven't delved deep into a lot of things sports-wise. You know, I do have the Tigers-White Sox game on in the background. Happy MLB opening day if you're a baseball person. Let me know your baseball team in the comments if, if you don't, if you're not scared. But, uh, but yeah, the Lions are dropping their new jerseys on April 18th. The jersey that you see on the statue there in Detroit is not a sneak peek of the new jersey. They made that clear. They're just putting a jersey on the statue because, yeah, you know, they're, they're like they're excited for the draft. They're like, hey, the draft's here in Detroit this year. But the Lions are revealing their new uniforms on April 18th, save up those dollars. Go get your favorite player. It'll be interesting to see what those look like. I might get an Amon Ra or Gibbs. Maybe Gibbs. See a lot of people giving Gibbs high praise, thinking he's going to be a breakout star. He is plus 2,500 to be the offensive player of the year next year. I don't know exactly what that means but if you're a betting person <laughs> those are the odds of Gibbs being the offensive 
player of the year next year. But yeah, uh, speaking of Amon Ra a little bit, um, hopefully he gets an extension that would, you know, matter a lot in me getting one of his jerseys. But Dan Campbell did say in his press conference down there in Orlando, Florida, that it is a priority to get Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Jared Goff extended in this offseason. That's good news. I hope it happens. A lot of people kind of want to see Goff play out this year before we extend him. I think they do get a deal done with Goff before the season starts. I think it'd be smart before a quarterback takes some big time money. Just so maybe we can get a good friendly deal with Goff. Um, Who knows? I think he wants to be in Detroit. I think that he likes what's going on here. I think he likes the coaches. Likes the team. But his boy did just walk. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, Amon Ra definitely need to lock down Amon Ra. 100%. The rumors are, we've been saying $28 million, three-year deal. We'll see what happens. Brad Holmes is pretty good at negotiating contracts. Sometimes he's reluctant To pay the top dollar. But uh, hopefully he pays his own guys some good money. He said that was the plan. You know, build through the draft. Resign our guys. You know, stay true to them. So hopefully he gives them the bag. And we keep Amon Ra around for years to come. But, you know, they did say another priority of the offseason was to keep Josh Reynolds around. And we saw how that turned out. Josh Reynolds ended up going to Denver on a two-year deal worth up to $14 million. I'm assuming the Lions didn't offer him as much. And Denver was the best option as far as money goes. So he went there. Um, I did see a lot of people on social media rejoicing. Which, I mean, come on. Josh had a solid year until that last game. Um, I also did people see, or I saw people saying that he was point shaving and all that. And somebody paid him off. I don't know about that. Uh, That would be a damn shame. But Dan and Brad both said they, they wanted to bring him back. And it did not happen. He's on his way to Denver. Now, with that happening, do we go out and get a wide receiver in free agency? I know Shadow Viper was talking about a D end, but do we go get a wide receiver still in free agency now that Reynolds has gone to Denver, or do we just go address this in the draft? A lot of people have us drafting a wide receiver at 29. I see us. Projected to get, is it Leggett out of South Carolina? I've also seen us link to Coleman out of uh, Florida State. But what do you want to see us do? You know, there's there's a lot of wide receivers still available here in free agency. There's Hunter Renfro, 28 years old, Allen Robinson, Odell Beckham Jr., Michael Gallup. Tyler Boyd, Michael Thomas, Marquez Valdez-Scandling, Russell Gage, Kendrick Bourne, DJ Shark. Do you want to see us have a reunion with Shark? Him and Goff already have chemistry, or they started to get that towards the end of his time with Detroit, and he made some big plays for us. He was injured a lot of the time, and he has, you know, an injury history. But, uh, you know, he's already... Proven himself in Detroit there at the end of his time. Made some big, big plays, especially in that game against Green Bay. But um, do you want to see Shark come back? Jamal Agnew, still available as well. He's kind of, you know, a smaller guy. Deontay Harty, McCole Hardman. You know, there's a ton of guys. Amon Ross St. Brown's brother is still still available. So, Equiminus, I don't know how to say his name. But, yeah, there's, there's some guys out there at the wide receiver position that we could still pick up or do you still do you just want to see us address that in the draft going to go over here to the comments 
been seeing a few come in here. Rick says, that's my wife and I's anniversary, 22 years. She's crazy. <laughs> well, congratulations. Early anniversary there. Congratulations. Buy her a jersey. Or maybe she should buy you a jersey. You know, there you go. <laughs> Be a great anniversary gift. Joseph, what's up? Is this a different channel than that Derek guy? No, this is uh, the same channel or one of his channels, but uh, I'm just not usually here on Thursdays. I am on Tuesday, but I'm completely different. You know, I bring a different approach. This is Touchdown Detroit Lions over here. Got a lot of positivity going on. I do uh, critique the team as well. But yeah, this is uh, my own little show on Syndicate Sports Detroit. I believe his other channel is Lion Syndicate that he's been mainly on. Um, he, he did say he was going to bring back Spike Kool-Aid to this channel, but it's been a while. It's been a while. So Derek, I don't know if you're coming back. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been... I've been over here on Syndicate Sports Detroit holding it down for a little bit. Lady Lion, I feel St. Brown and Goff are on the same wavelength. Goff won't be missing Reynolds for a long, for long, I hope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like the Amon Ross St. Brown and Goff extensions go hand in hand. You know, they uh they've Am Amon Ra doesn't know another quarterback in the NFL. They have great chemistry. They established that in his rookie year. He was kind of his go-to guy. And, um, yeah, it's just been up since then. I think Amira is going to have a bigger year this year than he had last year. And he was all pro last year. But, yes, I do think that, the you know, it's hand-in-hand. Hand. I don't know if their agents are working together. But I think that that is something that they're both, you know, looking at the coaches and Brad Holmes they're not dumb. They And you, that's a great point that you made there. Lady Lion. Rick, no free agency. Grab one in the middle of the draft. Young blood. Okay. Rick also says EQ sucks. Equiminous. Yes. <laughs> yes, or however you say his name. I agree. But uh, I don't want to pick up the other St. Brown. I'm with you. He was talking trash about us all year when he was playing for the Bears. So, uh, yeah, he can stay. Off the Lions and him and St. Brown can, Amon Ross St. Brown can still have their banter on their podcast. But yeah, I agree. I I don't know. I don't know if I want to pay any of these receivers in free agency. Yeah, they're just like, I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody who I really want to take back or take, you know, Shark. He would probably be kind of pricey. Uh, it says here on Sports Track that he's estimated to go for if it was a one year deal on Spot Track, sorry, that would be around ten million dollars. And they were pretty spot on with the Reynolds contract as well as a few others. So, you know, if it's a ten million one year deal, I'd, uh, I'm staying away from that. I'm staying away from that. <laughs> Rick says, thanks, Nick. Yeah, for sure. On the congratulations, for sure. John Peterson can get a good wide receiver in the third round. I agree. This uh, this draft class for wide receiver goes a little bit deeper. So I wouldn't mind waiting a little bit. I In, in the draft, I want to go here. You know, edge, I think we still need some help there. It's, you know, just somebody to compliment Hutch. I said it earlier, the team believes in Marcus Davenport, but we'll see what happens. I wouldn't mind going edge. Definitely still could use another corner in that room, whether it be through the draft or free agency. That is something to note that in the press conference, Dan Campbell said that they still want to address corner and safety in free agency. But Brad Holmes said right now they're sitting fine at corner. So that's kind of the first time that I've heard them have different opinions on, you know, this a, the similar subject. But uh, I wouldn't mind picking up another corner in free agency and in the draft, but I definitely want to draft another corner. Interior offensive line and wide receiver. That's what I want to address in the draft. 
Brad has made it clear that they're going to go best player available. He thinks that the roster right now is set up for them to go and get anybody. He said that, you know, it's not a necessity for them to come out and perform immediately like some of the guys were expected to last year. And he said that's a luxury. So they're going to go with whoever they feel is their top player on their board whenever it's their turn in the draft. So it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what anybody else out there thinks. They're going to do what they want to do. It's proven to work in the past, so I trust it. And I'm just going to roll with whatever Brad and Dan do here in April. But all right, Shadow Viper says, I would like to trade back at 29 and get back that third we traded for Davis. But if not, then we should draft a wide receiver in the third as long as we get defensive players with 29. And I'd love offense in the second. Yeah, I, and that's been going around as well. Um, I'm not sure we're staying at 29. I've kind of been thinking we're going to move. I believe Rick said it last week that he sees us either moving up or moving back, but not staying at 29. And I would like us to acquire more picks instead of move up. But if they have somebody that they absolutely love and they feel like he's going to go earlier than 29 and they go up and get him and he's a game changer, then you know what? I'm I'm okay with that. I'm happy with it. But I would rather trade back a few picks, not too far, and acquire more picks, especially in the top 100. If we can get, you know, that, like you said, that third round pick that we got for back that we got that we traded for Davis. Excuse me, gosh, um, working overnight, brain is scrambled. Anyways, no excuses. But yeah, uh, I would love to get that pick back, or even a few more in the top 100 would be great. And I think, I think that's where we're going. I could see, definitely see that happening. A lot of people are saying that's going to go down and I could definitely see Brad Holmes doing it. Rick says EQ ain't worth vet minimum. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. He's, I don't know. He's going to have a hard time finding a team. He didn't get much playing time at all. On the Bears, I expected him to play all day against us because he was playing against his brother. But yeah, he's just he's just not good. Hatter's House trade up for Latu. Okay. Hatter's House wants us to trade up. So yeah, there's mixed opinions. I mean, I I wouldn't be mad at all as long as we go up and get somebody that is gonna fit this team, fit the mold, and be a game changer, be a day one starter. They better be a day one starter if we're trading up. That's all I'm saying. But either way, I I don't see us sitting at 29. I just don't see it. Zach J, yo, it's not Tuesday. I know. I know. I got really busy this week, but I still wanted to get a show in, so I decided to go Thursday. Don't worry. I'll be back Tuesdays. I'm not switching days, but Thursday was available, and I decided to hop on. So still Tuesday, still Tuesday, same time, 5 p.m. Detroit time. 5 p.m. Eastern. You know how we do. But I appreciate you guys coming in and saying what's up. (laughs) Latu (laughs) equals Lions by a million is what Hatter's House says. Lions are already by a million. But, yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And I agree. Would Would be a good pick. Rick says, do we want more picks or do we want better picks? Can have both, but it's not likely. I think that... Brad Holmes can cook with more picks. But day one starters. I mean, because look at, yeah, you have a good point there because our first four picks last year were early. We had two first rounders and two early second rounders all turned out to be starters. After that, none of the guys that we drafted after those first four, really did anything for us all season long. So, I'm with you. You know, better picks, more valuable, obviously. So, yeah, you know, like I said, I'm not going to be mad at all if we trade up and go get a guy who's going to be a day one starter. 
And if but if we can move back just a few picks from twenty nine and acquire some I, I don't know. I either way, I trust Brad Holmes. I think more picks in the top one hundred this year is what I'm going with because we have a pretty solid core right now. Set up the future. Get one get one solid guy there. I mean, we're gonna get some more solid guys. I trust Brad Holmes. I think this year I want more picks because I think there is some depth here in this draft for us to get some good quality picks later on who can make a difference this year who aren't going to be sitting all year long like a Broderick Martin or Antoine Green, you know, so. (laughs) All right. All right. Good question, though, there, Rick. Good question. Hatter's house. Oh, yeah, we said Latu. Lions by a million. Zach J, we want more better picks. That is right. We want more better picks. (laughs) Hatter's House says, I'm a UCLA fan, so I'm biased. But UCLA had their best defense of basically all time, and he was the best player on that defense. Yeah, Hatter's House, aren't you located in California? Didn't you say that? I agree. He's a great player. Um, He could definitely help out the defense in a huge way. Maybe he drops to us. I don't I don't know. Well, the draft is always crazy. The draft is always crazy. But definitely a great player on that defense. And I think he could do well for the Detroit Lions. Hatter's House also says, if we don't get Latu, I want the best offensive lineman or wide receiver available at 29. Yeah. It, or he's, and he says, maybe a cornerback. Me personally, I've been I want a corner. I don't know why. I just want one. I I think we need more help in that cornerback room, even though we addressed it big time. And from the sounds of it, it didn't seem like we were gonna get or the coaches didn't think we were gonna get both Amik Robertson and Carlton Davis. Because they thought once we made the trade for Davis that Amik was off the board. They gave him a call. And he responded with Are we going to get this deal done or what? Which I love. So that means he wanted to come to Detroit. So, But I still feel like we need more help there at corner. But yes, a lot of people are saying offense this year. Even though our offense is stacked. But, you know, we need to show up the future there. Offensive line, big time. And wide receiver could possibly be our biggest need on this team right now. I think when you look at the roster up and down. It probably is, you know, just because you're unsure of what j is going to do this year. I think he does make a major leap. I think it's a j breakout season. I think he solidifies himself as that wide receiver two there. You know, Amon Ra's wide receiver one, even though he plays the slot as well. But we still need that other receiver there. I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to do well for us, especially having a full off season with the team. But... We still need somebody else there, and the draft is where we're going to go. I, I I said earlier, well, we, we talked about it earlier, named off some free agent wide receivers. I just, I'm not comfortable with paying any of those guys any kind of money <laughs> and having them on our team. So, um, yeah, offense, got to sure it up for the future. I do see JMO having a breakout year, but we definitely need to address the wide receiver room still. And the draft is the way to go. All right. Br- Rick says Brad will do whatever he's got to do to get his guys. You're not wrong. Had his house. Yes, Los Angeles. That's what's up. My brother lives in Los Angeles. He's a Lions fan. He actually went to that last uh Rams game, not the Rams game where we beat them in Detroit, but the one in Los Angeles where we weren't so good, but we were pulling out all the stops, busting out the trick plays. Had them on, you know, their heels at first, but yeah, didn't end up winning that game. (laughs) Anyways, maybe you guys can get a beer for a game or something. All right, Shadow Viper. I want offensive line in the second for in case of injury. And fingers crossed that no injuries plus future starter at either guard or center. We got lucky last year, yes. 
been talking about it. Frank Ragnow is a warrior. He's a beast, but he's always hurt. So we have to get someone for the future there. I agree big time. Glasgow, he's there for three more years, but, you know, he is not the youngest guard. And uh, Zietler, who we just got, is 34 years old. So I don't know if he's going to be there longer than this year. So definitely need to address guard, interior offensive line, preferably a center who could play guard as well. Uh, most of them can. A lot of them can. But someone who can play both, you know, have that versatility like Glasgow. That That is very valuable. But j just in case, you know, Frank is still good to go and we can put them there at guard next year. Or maybe they step it up and they're a beast this year and win the job. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. But, yeah, like you said, hopefully no injuries happen. It is the NFL. Guys get banged up. If injuries do happen across that offensive line, let's just hope it's for like a game or two max. But I'm with you there. I've been preaching. I've been I've been beat pounding at the table. We need a guard. We went out and got one, but I still want one in the draft too. I still want one in the draft as well. Hatter's house. I would be fine with trading back from 29 as well. Yep. I, I see it happening. Trading up or trading back. I don't I don't think we're sitting at 29, but I could definitely be wrong. What I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? What do I know? Zach J, I would like an edge or a cornerback. Seems like a deep offensive line and wide receiver class. Yeah, 29 or if we trade up or, yeah. With our first pick, I'm with you. I, I That's where I want to go. I want to go defense with our first pick. I definitely think we can acquire good talent at guard, wide receiver, later on. I think we're all in agreement here. I think we're all in agreement. Hatter's house, if we go edge, we'll have to trade up from 29, in my opinion. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of the mocks, which I don't know, you know, how much <laughs> they really translate to the real deal. But they, a lot of the good edge rushers are going early on, and that's expected. That always happens. But I asked last week, and I didn't get a big response. I did post some highlights of Luther Ellis's son. I think Jonah Ellis. I believe that's his name. I apologize if I'm wrong, but out of Utah. He's an edge rusher. He had a pretty good, solid, solid career at Utah. Would you want him? Would you guys want the son of a Lions legend? He's just one of them. I, there, there's, there's probably better ones out there, but, <laughs> but check out his highlights and let me know what you think. I, th he said his favorite team at the combine. He said his favorite team is the Lions. So, he's probably hoping he goes to the Lions. <laughs> J, mommy, good to see you in here. Holmes is interested in a couple of players from Alabama. That's the interest. In the Alabama Pro Day. Yeah, it seems like Holmes likes his Bama boys. I'm not opposed to it. You know, one side of my family all likes Alabama. The other is all Iowa. And it seems like Brad likes the Iowa boys too. So I'm I'm fine with us drafting Alabama and Iowa players. I like Cooper DeGene from Iowa. And of course, I like Kool-Aid. I like the other corner from there as well. They got some ballers on the defensive side, both of them. And, of course, on the offensive side, too, for Alabama. But, yeah, Brad likes his Bama boys. Don't be surprised if we draft some more Alabama players. Imagine Kool-Aid and Branch back together. And by the way, Branch, they they said they're going to they have big plans from this year. He might be playing some safety, but they're going to expand his role in a major way. Looking forward to that. He's ready for it. Branch is going to be great. Mark my words. He was already a really good rookie. He's going to have a breakout season this year. Hatter's house. 
Yeah, I was at the Chargers slash Lions game. It was fun. That's right. We talked about that. You saw them win. That's what I'm talking about. And it was, you know, down to the wire. Got to see a game-winning field goal before we got rid of Riley. <laughs> I think Riley Patterson hit that game-winning field goal, right? That was before Badgley, before the money Badger. Hedisau says tons of Lions fans. That's right. Yeah, traveling well. Traveling well, like always. Jay Mommy, the draft is deeper in receivers than cornerbacks. I think that cornerback will be first. Yeah, cornerback or edge. Um, same with, you know, interior offensive linemen are a little bit deeper as well. I've uh, been seeing a few comments today saying get a wide receiver in the third round. I definitely think there will be good talent there in the third round that we can go with that will make a difference this year that could play that wide receiver three. Uh, you know, establish themselves maybe later in the season or, you know, could be a diamond in the rough. Brad Holmes is good at finding them. So, yeah, I would like us to go offense, you know, second, third round and address that defense. Get someone who can start or, you know, work their way into a, a key role on that defensive side with our first pick. I would definitely love to go defense there. I'm with you and... I personally, as well, am on the cornerback train. Jay Mommy Glasgow is still considered a top five at his position. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. I'm just saying, you know, he's he's not getting any younger. We are going to have to eventually replace him. But Zietler, on the other hand, is 34, so it would not hurt at all to get a guard still and to learn from Graham and Zietler this year and. To work with Graham so then they can get on the same page. Work together moving forward. Glasgow is for sure top notch. Hatter's house. Our O-line should be elite once again. 100%. They are, you know, to me, top three. Maybe the best in the league. Maybe the best in the league. I'm not going to say that they are right now. I have to, you know, look around. I haven't really looked to see, haven't gone into what other teams have done completely in the free agency market and, and whatnot. And it's not over yet. So, but I, I would say we're top three. I would say we're definitely top three. Zach J, Nick, you go into the draft this year. I really want to. I, I signed up for that whole fan thing. Put me in the front row. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it's in Detroit. So as of right now, I don't have any plans to. I've been working my butt off. But I don't I don't think right now it's not in the cards, but that could change. That could change real soon and very easily. Are you going to go to the draft? Is anybody in this in the comment section? Going to the draft. If so, let me know. Maybe you can convince me. We'll see. I like to watch things from afar. But, you know, it could be fun. It could be real fun. Let's see here. Where were we? Where were we? Hold on. There we go. John Peterson. What Iowa CB at 29 want? Yeah, uh, Cooper DeGene. If he goes to 29, I would love that. He could return for us as well. We could throw him an end around or two here and then on offense. The guy's explosive, and when he does intercept the ball, he's he has a very good chance of taking it to the house. He's a ball hawk. Um, a lot of people have been saying that. He would be converted to safety. Well, we could use him as safety too. They like to run that little rotation there. So, you know, I and and he could, you know, he's versatile. So I, I wouldn't I don't care if, if he's if we're drafting him for a corner or a safety. Cooper DeGene, if he's there at 29, that's who I want. Him or Kool-Aid. I'm that's where I think that that's who I think that I want right now. Um we did address the interior offensive line, or not offensive line, interior defensive line with DJ Reader. But I, I like that guy out of Illinois. He's nasty. 
Johnny. I think Johnny Newton. Check him out. Apologies if I'm wrong in the name. <laughs> Jay Mommy, I'm really looking forward to seeing Branch lay some wood on Swift. Oh, yeah. Twice a year. It's going to happen. Make him fumble. It's Branch isn't going to be affected by this new tackle rule at all. Because that fool comes full speed out of nowhere. And like he says, lays the wood. The, the kid is incredible. He picked up a fine last year for hitting B. John Robinson and said, yeah, I'll take the fine on that one. I don't care. <laughs> you love to hear that. The kid's nasty in a good way. J. Mommy, the Lions, to get a couple of offensive linemen that can play multiple positions, yes, Frank isn't going to play much longer. Unfortunately, I agree with you on Frank. That's why we got to get him a Super Bowl. Him and Taylor Decker, maybe we go with a tackle as well. A lot of people have been saying that. You know, Sewell is going to be here for years to come. We got to lock him down. But And I've also been saying, people, why aren't we addressing, you know, an extension with Sewell? We're going to, we're going to try to extend Amon Ra and Goff. Why not Sewell? Well, a lot of you guys all probably know Sewell. We have a fifth-year option with him that we're probably going to pick up. They'd be smart to, and then we're going to extend him. Sewell's going to be locked down. They'd be stupid not to lock down Sewell, and I think Sewell wants to stay with Dan Campbell, and Dan Campbell and Brad are here through 2027. So, uh, But it has been rumored that we can go – that we're going to go maybe get a tackle in the draft as well. Uh, I wouldn't be mad about it because Decker is, you know, he's still still good to go, but uh, he battles through injuries as well. And, um, yeah, these we, we got to get Frank and Decker and just for everybody, for the fans, for, <laughs> for the Lions. That's my neighbor's dog. Jeez. Um, just need to get that Super Bowl for these guys because, yeah, I don't see Frank playing much longer, unfortunately, even though he's still young, you know, for <laughs> – he's still young. Just that's the, that's the way of the NFL. But he's a warrior. I appreciate everything Frank has done for us. So get the Super Bowl for him this year. Zach J., I was thinking about going to the draft, but when I heard Rod Wood talking about the number of people, I said, never mind, yeah feel the same way yeah i'm with you zach j if we didn't stay at 29 would you rather have us trade up or trade down i'm 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 trying to trade back i want more picks i think but as long i want more picks in the top 100 if we can make that happen uh brad holmes has been good with the top 100 picks and like we've been talking about wide receiver offensive line more depth there this year in the draft I think we'd be good to go there. But if, if we're at 29, get that. And I, I don't want to go too far back, though, from 29. Let me make that clear. Like, max 10 picks. <laughs> and I and I don't even know if I want to do that. But, yeah. I, I if, if I had the choice, I would trade back, get some more picks. Just because of our draft history. Now, laugh, like I said earlier, too. I don't know if you were here, but um, last year's draft class, first four were great for us immediately. We have yet to see who was drafted after that do anything. So, you know, can't judge that draft class yet. The early ones, you can already say, yeah, these guys are good to go. But we still have time for Broderick Martin. You know, Antoine Green, Hendon Hooker, all them to develop. DJ Reader is going to help out Broderick big time. But I think this this draft class is a little bit deeper for what hopefully we're looking for and get. And they can contribute a little bit sooner. Um, previous draft classes, guys who we've gotten deeper have turned out to be good right away. Malcolm Rodriguez played a huge role in his first year for us. Last year played a little bit smaller of a role because we had Jack Campbell and Derek Barnes emerged in his third year. Um, and, of course, Anzalone's there. Uh, but, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown the first year. But, you know, I, I think that this year it's a little bit deeper for what we might go out and get or what we need. And 
And I think that we can get away with trading back, getting more picks, and having guys contribute right away who we draft a little bit deeper. That's just where I stand. That's just where I stand. Jay Mommy, Sewell is the top-ranked offensive lineman in the NFL. He's going nowhere. Yep. He, I, I agree. And Brad Holmes isn't dumb. I wasn't calling him dumb earlier when I said they'd be stupid not to lock him down. They will absolutely lock him down for life. And he doesn't want to go anywhere. He's out there trying to recruit people. He's talking to Max Crosby at the Pro Bowl saying, you know, yeah, he's a player. He gets it. It's awesome playing for him. You should come to Detroit. <laughs> and then Max Crosby in a podcast said, if there's, they asked him if there's anywhere else besides Oakland you'd want to play. He said, oh, if we're keeping it real, because you know how <laughs> Crosby talks. He said the Lions. So if there's any, you know, that's another question. Would you want to trade away? A few picks in this year's draft, the 29th pick, and maybe the th- and maybe another one for Crosby. Would you do that? I think if he was on the team last year, we win the Super Bowl. I don't know. It'd be crazy if we went out and traded for Crosby. I don't see it happening, but who knows? Maybe at the deadline. Maybe at the deadline. Maybe the Raiders will be terrible. And maybe he'll want out. Maybe he'll request a trade. And we'll be like, you know what? Come on back to Michigan. Come on. Rick says, yes. Yes. Are are you wanting to trade for Crosby? Is that what you're getting at? Is that 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 yes? Because I think I'd do it. I think I'd do it. With 29 and a third. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I think I might do it. All right. Well, you know, free agency still out there. Dan said they still wanted to go cornerback safety. There's some good corners. I I, I do want to address them in. The draft, but you know, Xavier Howard's another one who said he wouldn't mind coming to the Lions, who is available. He is 30 years old, but other than him, you know, this Stefan Gilmore, we already got Steven, Micah Hyde, he's 33, Patrick Peterson. There's some guys out there, there's some guys out there who could help the room as vets, but uh, I would like to see us draft one, and as far as safety goes. You know, I see a lot of people wanting Quandre Diggs. He's still there. He passed, you know, that first year. I don't think he's going to get a big contract like maybe he was hoping. Um, so maybe we could have him come out or come in and help out that safety room <clears throat> on a prove-it deal or just a, a vet deal. Because he, he's got paid. He's proven that he's, you know... He's good, but he is 31 now. <clears throat> but I think he could help out our young guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez. Got a frog in my throat. He could help out our young guys with, uh, you know, some knowledge, some of that vet knowledge. And he lays, well, he used to lay the hit. He still does, but I guess in Seattle, you know, he's known more for his ball hawking ability. And they said he missed a lot of tackles there or missed more tackles. Than he guess he did in Detroit. Because when he was in Detroit. He was always known. For coming down and smacking people. But I wouldn't mind. Picking digs back up for one year or something. You know. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. Rick says yep. Talking about getting Crosby. Zach says. We just need the Raiders. To fire Pierce and Max will be ours. That's right. I know. When they hired Pierce. I was like No. No, because I had a feeling he was going to demand a trade if Pierce didn't come back and he would have wanted to come to Detroit. I think it would have happened. I think it would have happened. Who knows, though, that Pierce stayed in Oakland and uh, yeah, 
Max is still there. So Zach J, Brad made a very underrated move and upgrade our water boy room by signing Nate Sudfeld. Yeah, thank said it earlier. Thank God. Thank you. Lord that we brought back Nate Sudfeld. Because, you know, that guy, he great practice quarterback. No. <laughs> You know, he, he must provide some some kind of knowledge there. Dan said he's more valuable than people know. He didn't say that this year. He said this last year when he got hurt. And he felt bad for Sudfeld. So maybe it's more of one of those things like, ah, Nate, you got hurt last year. You're out for the season. We're going to take care of you. I don't know. You know, Hooker hopefully is the number two quarterback there in the room. But you always need a number three quarterback. And I think him and Goff are buddies. Maybe he's got a good quarterback brain. <laughs> but yeah. The big signing of the week. Nate Sudfeld. But yeah, if there's no more questions, we are about at the hour. Usually I am here on Tuesdays. If you enjoyed yourself, if you're around normally, you know where to find me. That is every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Detroit time is what I like to say. But 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. on the West Coast. This is Touchdown Detroit Lions. But Zach says, if teams are calling on Hennon Hooker, are you considering answering? Well... That, to me, depends on what we do with golf this offseason. If we get an extension done, yeah, I'm answering the phone. Um, you know, if it's a three-year extension or more, I'm answering the phone. Just just to see what we could get for him. If You know, if we could get a first for him, I, I don't know if we could. I don't, you know, we drafted in the third. He hasn't proven anything, so I doubt we could get a first for him. But I would answer, I would pick up the phone, especially if we extend golf for three years or more. If we don't get a deal with him in the off season, though, and he is, you know, we're still negotiating during the regular season. No, I'm not picking up the phone at all yet. Uh, you know, obviously we'd have to get the deal done before the draft, which is coming up very soon. So. Yeah, but that's the only way I'm picking up the phone is if they're very confident that they're getting a deal done or that they get a deal done with golf. Otherwise, you know, it might come down to a situation like in Minnesota where we don't get a deal done. It goes the whole way through the season and somebody offers golf some big time money and he walks. I, I don't know. I don't see that happening. They say it's a priority to lock down golf, but yeah, if, if they're very confident, or if they get a deal done, I'll, I'd answer the I'd answer the phone. I'd answer the phone on a call for Hendon Hooker. Yeah, Rick says nobody's calling about Hooker. There are six QBs with first round grades. You're right, but Zach says yeah, but most of those QBs are going quick. Either way, that was my point right there. If we get an extension done when, with Goff. Or they're very confident that it's going to happen, and somebody calls about a Hooker. I'd answer the I'd answer the phone to answer your question, Zach. But Rick does not believe that anybody will call for Hooker. There are some good quarterbacks definitely in this draft. I hope that the Bears make the wrong choice. <laughs> I hope that once again the guy that they pick, whoever it is, whether it's Caleb Williams, which is probably going to happen, I hope he's a bust. Sorry, kid. <laughs> Not wishing no ill will. I kind of am. But it's just because it's the Bears. Nothing against you. It's because it's the Bears. That's the only reason. <laughs> That's the only reason why I want whoever the Bears draft for their quarterback to fail. Because they got rid of Fields. You heard Dan Campbell. He was happy to have Fields out of the of the division. I am too. Every single time that we played against him, the guy ran for 150 plus yards. <laughs> I mean, even if he wasn't passing for that much, you know, it was, 
it's still he still he still cooked against us. It was still a pain in the ass. But all right, y'all. I'm gonna get out of here. We're at the hour. I gotta clear some space. They got I just got a new hard drive. Cause it just cut my recording. And it said that I have insignificant space now. But it's the stream's still going, so that's good. At least I can still talk to y'all, but I gotta get out of here, clear some space. So I'm running strong from here on out. And then I can record these. Oh, by the way, um, I don't know if y'all know, but I guess this one will get cut off. Um, but it's at the end anyways. I do have all these uploaded on audio on podcast platforms. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. I believe it's on Amazon. It's on all that. So if you miss out, I usually upload it the night, like Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. You can just search it. It's Touchdown Detroit Lions. You can listen in if you're on the road or something or if you're at work. But yeah, I have uploaded all, not all of them, but from like episode 40 something. Since then, all of those have been up on other streaming networks. But yeah, I'm here every Tuesday. I enjoy you guys coming in here, guys and gals. And talking with me live though. So, you know, don't don't shy away. Don't go to just the audio. <laughs> Stay with me here because this is where it's at. Uh, but yeah. Every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Detroit time, 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. West Coast. This is Touchdown Detroit Lions. I'm Nick Harkson. Peace. Touchdown Detroit Lions!